Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. I'm doing what? So in this video, I found kind of unique motherboard and CPU combo on AliExpress. And if it works, I think it is worth the price, but I don't know yet. I'm just guessing. The motherboard I'm talking about that arrived in this bent up box, Gunyu, I guess, B650i Night Devil. And it supports AMD Ryzen 7000 series processors. But I bought one that comes with the processor that they recommend and they ship it with, which is the Ryzen and 5 7500F, which is six core, 12 thread, I believe. And the boost was five gigahertz, I think. And the base was 3.7. So that being said, let's take a look at what is inside and what they're shipping it with. So a SATA cable, some sort of warranty card, I guess. Here is the processor. Yep, that's the one. It looks like it's used. Just so you know, for that price, you're getting a used Ryzen 5 7500. So I don't know now if I'm thinking if it is worth it, but you never know. Well, I have to check the prices as well so let me remove that tape okay take out the processor without pulling off a linus there you go so that is the processor and the motherboard let me take it out there you go actually it looks nice very nice it looks beautiful so this is actually uses lga 1700 socket i had one cooler which may be even half the price of this motherboard and cpu combo it's very expensive i have this so this is the noctua nhd 15 and i believe this should work with this overkill very expensive but i'm gonna try to install that on it it comes with four sata ports the usb and the usb and two dual ram and i believe it's ddr5 and uh, supports speeds of like 7000 as well 6800 6600 6400 all that stuff are supported in terms of io you have the spdif over here line out microphone wi-fi this is the one that goes in there we're gonna install usb 2s usb 3 2s USB C 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and I think it was the RTL 8125BG that's the chip for the 2.5 gigabit HDMI and display port, and the BIOS reset button. There is an NVMe SSD slot in the back that you can install in here, and also there is a PCIe slot over here. This is X16, and I believe this is Gen 4. And the NVMe SSD slot is also Gen 4, PCIe Gen 4. It says SATA 3, so 6 gigabit per second and that's what they're promising so just keep that in mind i see another slot over here but i am not going to take out this whole thing just to install this wi-fi and there is i already see inside the cable is dangling that's the rtc cable by the way so let's leave it i just want to install the cpu try this knock to a overkill cooler and bring out the power supply and connect some sata disk as well by the way, the front audio and USB and front panel is here in a very, very awkward position. Anyway, okay, by the way, there is another NVMe SSD slot underneath this. So it's two. That's what I remember. You were saying there's two. So let me take this out. So this is the heat sink, I guess. Okay, let me take it out. Okay, so there is a single NVMe SSD slot over here. So one in here, one in the back. So two M.2 SSD. So they have the thermal pad for bottom and for the top so you have to remove this before installing which i'm going to do i will install an nvme ssd over here some sata power supply two rams ddr5 and cpu and a cooler so give me a couple of minutes i will be right back okay so we are back and i am booted into windows and uh, let me show you some very impressive numbers actually i did a benchmark as you can see when it's idle it is around 53 60 watts okay 46 47 48 something like that when it's idle in windows uh, windows 11 so let me show you crystal disk benchmark result as you can see this is we are at the limits of the nvme ssd that i'm using which is the samsung 990 pro very impressive numbers and then if we look at the numbers in the 3d mark this is the score i am getting for the 3d mark cpu benchmark and uh, similar to the minis forum motherboard that i just reviewed in this channel and then also cinebench score 
4 is also very close but I think it is faster a little bit faster than the Mini's Forum one but overall you can see this is the Ryzen 5 7500F 6 core processor we are getting 734 points so it's a very very good score in a Cinebench 2024 okay let's take a look at a game for instance let's say just the Doom it is going to be using obviously the 4070 so it's not going to be really benchmark of the computer but I'm just going to show you how it works and the frames you will get and all that okay so I'm going to go to the settings advanced and I am going to put everything to max to ultra okay so we are at the ultra settings yes close close and we are getting 200 frames per second and it is very very smooth as you can see on the screen with this motherboard with the cpu and this gpu and you will see that gpu it's 54 55 degrees and cpu cooler as you can see cpu is 46 degrees because this is a little bit very overkill for the cpu but it is what it is so we are getting 46 degrees on cpu 57 on the gpu and fans are not even spinning and we are using 100 okay fans started spinning and it's 100 3500 3700 watts when you're playing doom with 200 frames per second with ultra settings okay so we are in the god of war and if we go to the settings and to the graphics it's in the original we go to ultra on all settings okay you will see that we are getting 100 frames per second 105 107 something like that and it is very very smooth to play as you can see we are not dropping frames it's never below 100 it's 100 10 16 and the gpu is actually a little bit more used and i see i feel the heat coming cpu as well cpu is rising to 50 60 and gpu is like around 62 but very very smooth to play so that being said i just want to show you quickly that when you start a benchmark for cpu the power consumption i just want to show you when you start it when you're using basically the cpu to the max it goes up to around 120 watts okay as you can see when you are using the cpu to the max when we are using the gpu to the max as you can see it goes up to 180 90 watts 180 watts 90 200 okay gpu will push the power consumption to 200 watts ish as you can see and the fan started spinning and cpu will push it to 120 watts ish okay so you saw all that now let me show you a little bit from the bios because they have a unique bios i've seen but not very common in the chinese motherboards that you buy off the AliExpress. And by the way, one thing I have to mention, let me reboot. I tried various uh, DDR5 RAMs. Two of them didn't work, but the one that worked is actually this one. Vengeance DDR5 5600 megahertz, 32 gigabyte, two 16 gigabyte sticks basically. So if you are going to buy this, just keep in mind, I don't know which RAMs work. I just tried two other different brands, didn't work. This one worked, just so you know. Okay, so we are in the BIOS. As you can see, it's unique. Some menus are still in Chinese I had to use like the you know Google Translate app to understand what it is saying so this is apparently advanced so as you can see there is like trusted computing TPM is there as you saw we already boot in into Windows 11 ACPI settings hardware monitor stuff the Celsius and as you can see this cooler is overkill for this but it's doing a great job IDE configuration PCIe oh yeah PCIe by the way in here well 4G resizing CIE Express settings and and you will see the other settings in here related to that PCIe Express and lock settings and if we go to USB configuration some settings in there network stack CSM NVMe detected both super IO stuff CPI FTPM and if we go to here you will be able to do some overclocking and some other stuff for the processor and these are more settings for the devices north bridge for Okay, CBS cpu options usually you guys are asking about the c state settings are here the svm svm enable nbio io mmu this is you might need this if you installed proxmox on this and you want to do pass through and here's the link speed settings for the pcie ch 
SMU. I just wanted to walk through so you guys can pause the video and see. I just want to show you all the settings that's there for different options. Okay. And yeah, that's kind of pretty much it in the BIOS. But as you can see, it's still a lot of Chinese in there. So you have to bear through it or just use the, you know, the translate app in your phone and then translate certain settings. But it's self-explanatory. The top menu items doesn't really matter that much. So let's boot into Ubuntu and check out Ubuntu a little bit. Okay, so we are booted into Ubuntu. As you can see, it is an Ubuntu 24 and kernel 6.8 and the AMD Ryzen 7500F and NVIDIA GeForce 4070 is detected. And uh, if I want to do, let's say, a stress NG, as you can see, the power consumption jumps up to 111, 112. And uh, if we look at the sensors, you will see that it doesn't get really hot. 67, not much really, 66, 67, max is 67. Okay, we are done. And the score is, okay, so it is slower than the Minis Forum one. Obviously that was a better CPU, but yeah, it is also a very good score. 286,000 we are getting in here. I believe we got 650,000 on the Minis Forum one. So if we do, uh, not necessary, but Sysbench as well. Power consumption doesn't really go all that way up, but I just want to see the score for the Sysbench. Okay, so we are getting 37,000. So just for reference, Raspberry Pi 5 in Sysbench, you will get 10,000. And in this one, you will get 876, like say a thousand. There is a big difference. I would go with Stress NG one, more accurate, I would say. So iPerf 3 also, let's test the port. That is 2.5 gigabit and exactly as promised. And we already did this benchmark. I'm not going to do HD Parm, but yeah, it's just there. One thing I just want to test is if we can access the BIOS. Okay, so it found something, but it couldn't determine the type and couldn't read it. If you want to play around the BIOS on this one, you have to go with the SOIC 8 clip and do it physically. I have one video dedicated to UART and chip reading data of chip. I have another one for review and extracting firmware and looking for UEFI backdoors on the PF Sense box. If you haven't seen those, go check those out. But yeah, so you can't really read the BIOS directly with the flash ROM, but there it is. Let me just also see. Let's be CIA-SVB. Let me just see the link speeds for, let's say, the SSDs. Yep, that's for the Samsung SSD. So what you will need on top of that is a RAM. So similar to Minis Forum 1, you also need a RAM, but that one is a different size RAM. So this is a full-size DDR5 RAM. And you will need a cooler. This bad boy is expensive, but as you can see, it does very, very well. Uh, it keeps the CPU in, within the margins of 43 degrees in idle. And when it is under 100% use, it goes up to 67, max 70 Celsius. You will need a CPU cooler. That's 100 bucks two RAM sticks depending on what you want a GPU and a case and a power supply for 300 bucks I think it's a fair deal it's just the company is not very well known you shouldn't really expect a lot of support maybe not at all I would say to be fair when I installed Windows 11 all the drivers everything worked without any issues like the Ethernet driver or any other driver everything worked out of box so no issues there but again you're buying it cheap and you're paying it for not having the support that's the deal the back door stuff and the Chinese and all that stuff that I always get in the comments you are on your own I showed you in a video how you can extract the firmware and reverse engineer and analyze it but yeah so just wanted to show you this motherboard that I found online and hopefully you enjoyed the video if you have any questions please let me know down below thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video bye for now